respected chair, dear members of the panel and the audience, my warm greetings to you from Colombo. I shall speak a few words on social justice in Sri Lankan Tamil society, its history and the future with emphasis on the case of caste oppression in Jaffna. Social justice in Sri Lankan Tamil society is inseparable from that in the whole country and has regional variations that make it hard to talk of the subject as a unified whole. There are three Tamil speaking nationalities in Sri Lanka, each with its own historical, cultural and even linguistic markers. To use the term Tamil nation or nationality to refer to them as a group is erroneous as they have been distinct entities for centuries and in the case of hill country Tamils, their geographic isolation from the Tamils of the north and east has meant that there has not been a shared social or political leadership for the, law, for the two nationalities. The Muslims, unlike Tamil Nadu, have maintained a separate cultural identity and integration with the Tamil nationality, the term that is commonly used for the Tamils of the north and the east, except in the Jaffna Peninsula, where there is no predominantly Muslim region and their relatively small numbers encourage close ties with the Tamils. But the vast majority of Muslims live among the Sinhalese, the reason being that a substantial section of the Muslims are of mixed ancestry, which is partly Arab. Tamil nationalist attempts to impose a linguistic identity on them proved counterproductive. Besides, the picture of the ethnic geography of Tamil speakers has changed drastically since displacement by state oppression and later civil war, with a substantial part of the Tamils of North and East settling in India, Europe, North America and Australia. Besides ethnicity, class and region have been decisive in determining the nature of issues of social justice. I will confine myself to issues of social justice related to serious social oppression. Gender oppression cuts across nationality and has mostly changed in form than content by the impact of the drift from a feudal mode of production to backward capitalism by urbanization accompanying the capitalist mode of exchange and by the expansion of the state and the mainly urban based capitalist sectors. Struggle for gender equality has been only partially successful despite the country being almost the first globally to grant women the right to vote. Female literacy and employment in the professions has been remarkably high by the second half of the last century, but the cultural burden weighs heavily on the plight of women. Female illiteracy is worst among Muslims and hill country Tamils. Interestingly, the Tamils of the North, especially Jaffna, still considered the most literate in the island, apply very repressive social rules for the place of a woman in society. The civil war led to a rise in the number of female-headed families and despite its economic and social damage, had a favorable impact on the place of women in society, but still far from adequate. It's hoped that modernization will have further favorable impact, but limited by the accepted norm of seeing the female as a commodity to serve and please the male. Class oppression is production related and victories won by the rising left movement since the 1930s led to remarkable gains in workers' rights and even political influence exercised by their trade unions. Much of these have been reversed 
Since the opening up of the economy under the semi-dictatorial executive presidency installed in 1978 under a new constitution. Given the complexity of class operation in the context of changes to the economy and the transformation of a semi-feudal colonial society into a new colony with a complex of modes of production Thus, inclusion of that aspect of social injustice in this talk will be over ambitious. The talk will from here on be confined to caste hierarchy and oppression among Tamil speaking people with emphasis on the section of Tamil speakers among whom caste oppression was most severe and hence struggle against it was most forceful. That is no promise of a comprehensive comment. The caste system of South Asia is unique to the region. The caste structures of different societies got integrated into 4 plus 1 varnas referred to in the Hindu sacred text, thus justified and defended as God given. The categories of varna system are ranked as Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaisya, and Sudra followed by a fifth defined by omission. Not all societies have all five categories and the caste hierarchy does not necessarily coincide with the Varna hierarchy. Among Lankan Tamils of Jaffna, the picking order is Vellala, several ranks of Sudras and then Dalits. The Brahmin and the Chetti Vaishya, exist but have a marginal role. No caste group seriously claims to be Kshatriya. In the East, the Mukkur, once associated with fishing, own land and dominate society at least on par with the Vellada. There are Dalits, but not repressed as severely as in Jaffna. In regions between North and East, like the Vanni, the hierarchy varies, but with visible Vellala dominance, repression of Dalits is however weaker than in Jaffna. <coughs> in the hill country, a majority belonged to some Dalit caste groups which worked in the plantations directly under British owners and later local and Asian owners so that the caste structure did not play a role in production relations. But Living quarters in many plantations are segregated based on caste hierarchy. There are the higher castes such as the Vellalas and Chettis employed in middle management besides serving as traders and in other professions. The higher castes still hold dominant position in some major trade unions. Although the repression by caste is weak if not absent, caste prejudice runs deep in the form of social identity. The Muslims do not have a caste system, but a wealth-based hierarchy exists. The caste structure among Sri Lankan Tamils thus stands in significant contrast with Tamil Nadu, where again, while the Brahmin presided over the caste hierarchy, the castes claiming Kshatriya and Vaisya Varna identities exist. The caste hierarchy and oppressing castes and the oppressed castes have regional variations. The hierarchy itself has changed with time through struggle and initiative of community leaders as well as the impact of Christianity. Increasingly, the caste hierarchies among the Sinhalese and the Jaffna Tamils are much similar. The Gobigama, <coughs> equivalent of the Vellala, dominance has been strong in the central Candians regions and in parts of what was the Candian kingdom and caste oppression was moderately strong well into the 20th century. Caste hierarchy yielded to wealth and learning in the coastal regions which had contact with the colonial rulers for nearly four and a half centuries. These caste groups, the Karawe officials, the Durave associated with trolley tapping and the Salagama who were brought into the island by the Dutch and engaged in trades such as cinnamon peeling, 
stood up to the govigama domination in key sectors of social activity communities with late south indian origin have jealously preserved their hindu or pagan traditions in matters like weddings and ritual healing and worship hindu gods while placing the buddha centrally among a pantheon of gods another interesting feature concerns caste based names tamils of tamil nadu retain their caste identity as the last part of the name until the self respect movement intervened to do away with it in tamil nadu while in many states the caste name lingers on as the surname or part of it tamil speakers with the exception of brahmins have as a whole discarded caste identity in their names even in the names of one village that occurs in tamil uh, names of india is absent in lankan tamil <coughs> registered name although a few added for sentimental reasons the sinhalese name offers a more comprehensive identification to include in the vasagama uh, descriptor most of if not all <coughs> the name of a village traditional house name like the ill names in malayalis clan standing on the family in society given names and family name what is interesting is that the caste identities also emphasized the way a family name is spelled in english for example j a y a w a r d a n a has variants spelled as j a y a w a r d h a n a j a w a w a r d h a n e j a w j a y a w a r d e n e j a y a w a r d e n a all pronounced like in singhala but with a thick cut sast identity to each english spelling caste oppression always had strong bearing on production relations even when the feudal mode of agricultural production yielded to the capitalist mode there have been pockets of resistance the system of loyalty on which the feudal mode relied persisted and features of feudal social relations can still be seen in much of south asia in sri lanka the system of universal franchise and unhindered access to universal free education in the mother tongue initially and english as well later on helped to elevate political and social awareness however the dominance of feudal ideology was stubborn and caste consciousness still plays a role in electoral politics and social preferences especially in matrimonial matters caste based discrimination in public places was made a punishable offense by the prevention of social disabilities act introduced by bandaranayaka in 1957 which helped the dalits the preferred term in lanka being panjamar of the north to advance socially but legislation was inadequate to change caste based discrimination in the north especially jaffna where caste based rituals and ceremonies continued and dalits were obliged to produce services to the high caste households dalits continued to be denied entry to temples and eateries in tea boutiques seating if offered was separate and vessels in which tea was served were different with dalits served either in a small can or a coconut shell caste discrimination also meant resistance the jaffna youth congress 1924 to late 1930s was the first public voice against caste based social discrimination and was inspired by the wycombe uh, campaign of periyar who visited north in 1925 on jyc's invitation dalit organizations emerged in the north to assert the rights of dalits their campaign backed by progressive forces like the jyc enabled the right to schooling for a section of the dalit children who were earlier denied the right as well as the right to other dalit children to be seated in class discouragement of dalit children by school authorities and teachers persisted although less visibly since independence 
it was such in such context that the movement against untouchability backed by the left communist party was launched in 1966 the campaign used armed struggle to battle against suppression by goons hired by the upper caste elite and even the police siding with them the campaign went on until the end early 1970s and succeeded in opening all public temples and eateries to everyone regardless of caste that was a major victory but caste discrimination still exists less visibly there was a brief spell during the civil war when the tamil nationality was persuaded by the ltte to leave the peninsula so that they could fight the armed forces unhindered the exodus from the peninsula to kelinochi in pouring rain was a painful sight during the time there was no sign of caste difference people received support and gave support to the old the sickly the frail and shared food and water anyone who imagined that adversity had knocked sense into a caste ridden population had only to wait until the procession reached kalinochi people regrouped according to caste and members of higher caste cleansed themselves of contamination by contact with untouchables by washing themselves and the clothes that they wore this was nothing unique similar experiences have been reported on other occasions the myth that the ltte's ulam wasas eliminated caste discrimination was exploded by such experiences including denial of access to so called private temples a more recent example was when caste ridden bigots sought to reactivate a crematorium that was long in disuse and was surrounded by settlements over the past several decades the entire community of the people nearby mobilized to stop resumption of the cremation the matter went to court and the court suspended the use of crematorium but when the protesters sought support from political readers they met with excuses for not associating with their demand for fear of precious upper caste votes it is worth noting that while in the south parliamentary representation has been in proportion to caste identity it is weaker in the east and poor in the north in the jaffna peninsula with nine seats and a dalit population of at least 25% the first dalit to be elected mp since 1947 was in 1977 that too after the dalits showed their muscle in 1966 to 72 The Dalit entered Parliament as appointed MP in 1970, thanks to the persuasion of the Moscowing Communist Party in the ruling alliance. His presence helped at least a modest sum of Dalits to secure places in education and employment, which would have been otherwise denied to them. Marriage outside caste is still taboo and mostly punished by exclusion from family and community. an economic and educational standards have risen among dalits and it has become harder to humiliate them even in private but the more reaction resections miss no opportunity to deny appointments and promotions to those of low low birth and the lankan tamil community abroad particularly in europe and north america adhere to obsolete customs as well as in caste based discrimination thus the struggle has to continue on every front and by every necessary means warnings for the future concern the following tendencies the tendency to see caste oppression in terms of advancing the social standing of an individual a clan or a caste alone this stands in the way of a bigger need to eliminate caste hierarchy as a whole the tendency to conceal one's identity in order to identify with socially higher strata notably periyar remarked caste will cease to exist only the day a parian can announce chest erect i am a parian 
the tendency to isolate the struggle against caste oppression from other forms of oppression especially gender and class oppression and at times national oppression is another danger to think of thank you